Hi, I'm Dr. Ted Rogers. This is History by the Plate. Over the past couple of weeks, we've learned that Eastern North Carolinians will fight with Western North Carolinians over which sauce to use on their revered pork barbecue. But both will unite to fight against Texans over which meat, pig or cow, makes the best barbecue. It may sound like a lot of infighting, but there is a peacemaker in Southern cuisine, and that is the biscuit. The word biscuit comes from the Latin panus biscotus, meaning bread baked twice. This points to the Roman origins of dough baked, then put back in the oven to dry and crisp. A crisp, thin biscuit was the norm across the centuries and is still what the British refer to as a biscuit today. The British turned the biscuit into a full meal as they made hardtack biscuits food for their sailors when traveling long distances. In fact, due to the British Industrial Revolution, the Brits were able to mechanize the manufacture of seafaring biscuits during the Napoleonic Wars. In the States, hard, thin biscuits ruled, except in the South, where some creative southern cook found soft winter wheat could become a bit of fluffy golden goodness. This type of wheat was expensive, making biscuits special occasion food, reserved for Sunday best lunches or dinners. With the advent of inexpensive white lily self-rising flour in 1893, biscuits in the South became affordable treats instead of delicacies. Still, it was not until Colonel Sanders in 1952 took the Southern BFB, or Big Fluffy Biscuit, to his first franchise restaurant in Utah, thus beginning the spread of the golden wonder across the states. Today, gifted cooks across the South, such as Natalie Dupree, continue to expand the art of biscuit making. I hope this has been fun and informative. For more fun history, recipes, and travel tips, please visit our website at www.historybytheplate.com. Happy cooking!